I've uh, heard a lot, a lot of things said this week. It really, really hurt my feelings. And yesterday I was sitting at the house and opened up my Bible, and this is what where the Lord led me. I'm not talking about anybody here in the church. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about anybody here. But there are so many people in this world today that they're not content unless they're talking about somebody. Putting somebody down. <coughs> and that's just something that riles me up. I mean, it just, I can't explain it. I don't get mad. Well, maybe I do get mad, but it, I can't. When I hear somebody putting somebody down for the way they do things or whatever, it just, it bothers me. It rouses me up. It, it makes me angry, and I don't get I don't get no peace. I mean, I'm constantly thinking about what's going on there, and I just can't get no peace. And I think that's why the Lord's giving me this message this morning. But let's all stand for the reading of God's Word, James yeah. chapter three. And starting in verse 1, when you time to find it. it. Says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle his whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. And set a fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therefore bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the these similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doeth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine or figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with the knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, 
and devilish. Wherefore, envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gently, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and full of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Fathers, I come to you this morning, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that there's someone out there listening today, Lord. God, it needs to hear these words. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would lead this message, Lord, and, and give it to the people, Lord, that you know that needs to hear this message this morning. Well, I just pray, Lord, that I may decrease, Lord, while you increase. Father, we love you and we thank you for all you've done for us. Bless this church, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> You know, just about everywhere you go nowadays, we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school this morning. About everywhere you go, you hear somebody trying to knock somebody down or talking evil to somebody. And this ain't nothing but Satan working. It's all it is. Trying to cause division between families, between church members, between husband and wife. Just about everywhere I've went this week, I've heard somebody just rambling about somebody else. Nothing good to say about them. But who are they hurting? They're hurting self, number one. And they're hurting the people they're talking about. They don't tell them. They don't even stop and think about who, who they're hurting. They just rumble out whatever's on their mind. They never stop and think, well, is this what Jesus would do? I guarantee you, in Christ's day, you never heard him run, running somebody down. Now, he's always trying to help people. And as Christians, ain't that what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be Christ-like. There's a fellow at my house yesterday. He couldn't talk five minutes without telling a dirty joke. And I didn't appreciate that. Because my house is dedicated to God. I don't want nobody coming in my house and telling dirty jokes. I don't want nobody coming in my house cussing. And if I'd been the man that I ought to have been, I just stood up and said, look, we don't talk like that here. But I did. I just keep letting it bottle up, bottle up. By the time he left, I said, man, I couldn't stand myself. I mean, it's terrible to let people get to you and get under your skin like that. And I should have. I should have just stood up and said, no, wait, we don't talk like that here. And that's what we all should do if we have that, if we run into that problem. I would love to put a bridle on him. You know, the Bible says you put a bridle on a horse, you can tame the horse. You can get that horse do anything. You can get a full plow. 
little slave. That horse will mind you as long as you've got that bridle in. You've got that bit in his mouth. But you take that bit off, or that bridle off, and that horse got its own mind. He's going to do what he wants to do. You may have a hard time running him down out there in the open field if you take that bridle off to get it back on him. Because <laughs> I've always heard a horse is a free spirit. And you take that bridle off of him and him out in the field, well, it may take days to get it back on him. You may have to run that thing every day for a couple of days till you finally get him pinned up so where you can get that bridle back on him. But once you get it back on him, he's going to mind you. You know, I think the Lord ought to come up with bridle for some of us. Because I know, I know in my past, I've talked about people. And I'm ashamed of what I said about them. Because I wasn't doing them no good, and I certainly wasn't doing me no good. I was hurting myself. By letting people know that I talked about people. Because they're wondering, I want to see talks about me like that when I ain't around. Really. That's the impression you give people if they hear you talking about somebody. You wonder if they talk about me like that. We need to really watch what we say. If our hearts where it needs to be, we ain't gonna have that problem. Amen. Amen. But an unruly tongue is about the worst thing a, a, a person can have. I mean, it's 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 bad to catch a cold. It's bad to catch pneumonia. It's bad to be sick. But that ain't nothing to having an unruly tongue. That is the worst thing a person can have. And and I hope nobody thinks I'm trying to step on their toes because I don't know anybody here that's, that's like that. I think this message is mostly for people on Facebook because that's you see a lot of that on Facebook, unruly tongue, lashing out at people. That's what not. That's not what Facebook is for. Of course, ninety percent of what you see on Facebook, that ain't what Facebook was intended for. But you know, this world that we live in, people don't care to put their thoughts, no matter how bad they are. They don't care to put it out there where everybody can see it. What is wrong with this country when people do that? The only time I post on Facebook if I find something that touches my heart, I'll share it. And if there's you know anything going on here at church, I'll try to share it to let people know that we're going to have a saying or we're going to have homecoming or whatever. But I don't get on there to put somebody down. I don't agree with 90% of what's on there. But I'm not going to buy somebody for what they put on there. I ain't got no love in my heart if I do that. If I need to, if I need to say something to them, best thing to do is to give them a private message or, or even call them. You know, don't let the whole world see that, that what you think about them. I mean, that's private between you and them. But people just. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with America. And I'm sure it's not just America. 
I guess all countries have this problem. People just lash out at everybody. You know, I'm talking about my, my wife's family at Christmas time. I've not been down there in about six years because every time they get together at Christmas, somebody starts something. And it usually lasts all week till New Year's. And then it all blows over and everybody's just as happy as the Lord. But I can't, I can't, I can't stand that. That just draws my mind up into a knot. When I see somebody fighting or fussing. You know, we're all God's children. We should show the love that he showed us, especially at Christmas time. Christmas is about the birth of our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ. And we make it, I'm talking about all of us, we make it the hardest time of the year by everything that we try to get done during Christmas. Christmas ain't nothing but just a big commercial for the stores anymore. That's all it is. So they can make money. That is their biggest money-making time of the year is Christmas time. And the stores won't even tell you Merry Christmas no more. Happy holidays. I can't stand that. If you're going to wish me Christmas, wish me a Merry Christmas. Don't wish me a Happy Holiday. That's taking Christ plumb out of it. Yeah. <coughs> it's bad. It's bad. I know it's bad when you get riled up by these little petty things. But you want to make me mad? Tell me there ain't no Jesus. Or tell me I can't say Merry Christmas. Or tell me I'm wrong by believing in God. You going to make me mad. I'm not going to fight with you. But I'm probably just going to turn and walk away from you. And then bottle it up till it explodes. You get the house. <laughs> get an ulcer. Yeah, get an ulcer or a hernia or something. But this is the most precious time of year. But yet, it is the most stressful time of the year because we let it stress us out. And I don't know where that comes from. This ain't nothing to do with an unruly tongue. But, but I see so many people that claim to be Christians. Well, did you hear about old so-and-so? Do you know what they actually done? I can't believe they done that. That's just terrible. Well, what about you, sister or brother? What have you done lately? <laughs> I mean, if the shoe fits, wear it. Think about what you've done instead of worrying about somebody else, what they've done. I fail God every day. And I'll be the first to admit it. I got too much to worry about myself to worry about my neighbor across the road or, or, or down the street or somebody across town. What they do is between them and God. Now, just because I don't believe in what they're doing, that ain't no reason to get on Facebook or, or go down there and in town with a bullhorn and start bashing them. I just, I just don't understand the way the world works anymore. They used to be so much love and peace and at Christmas time. It was, it was a time you looked forward to. It was, it was a time that families got together and showed their love for each other. And churches 
would get together and, and have a party or a play or something, just a fellowship. And and everybody being one mind and one accord. That's what it's all about. It ain't about, well, I can't believe that old so and so done this. And I can't believe old so and so done this. I couldn't have done that. Well, if I'm mature, if each one of us looked and searched our heart, we'd probably done worse than that. Amen, Daniel? <laughs> I know I have. I can't, I can't look at nobody and say, well, I'm Mr. Perfect. I don't do that. I can't, I can't do that because I've been there. Most of the time when I see somebody doing something, I've been there. I've done that. And what right have I got to lash out at somebody that's doing wrong? I mean, I can go to them in love and try to help them and try to show them the right way. But I ain't got no business spreading rumors or adding to the rumors. What do you call that, Daniel? Spreading lies. Gossip. Gossip. Mm -hmm. Spreading lies about somebody to make it worse than what it was to begin with. You know, when God saves us, He came. There's a big change. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed it. But when you get saved, there's a big change. Your attitude is one thing that changes. Yep. And your tongue should change. Now I've got a I've got a cousin. Ain't gonna mention the name. I've got a cousin. She can put something on that on Facebook that'll bring tears to you guys. And in 30 minutes time, she'll put something vulgar on. And everybody just loves her post. But you know that what that, that tells me? That tells me she don't know the Lord. If she can post something so religious at one point and then go right behind it and post some old vulgar thing. A Christian can't do that. Now I'm not trying to judge her. But I'm just going from the fruit she's showing. You can't you can't straddle the fence. You're either for God or you're against Him. And anybody that's ever crossed the electric fence knows that if you touch that fence, you're going to get burned. And it don't feel good either. I used to be the world's worst when I was a kid to try to cross electric fences and I got burned every time I ever tried to cross one. You cannot straddle the fence. You're either for God or you're against Him. And the fruit you pour, that you put out to where people can see shows either you're for Him or you're against Him. Amen. Amen. Now, if I run over here to Rose, and I told her, I said, you know, I went over to Ola's the other day, and she didn't even offer me nothing to eat. Now, what's that? What is that? That's trying to stir up something. If I go up to Daniel's, and I said, Daniel, I went over to see Philip the other day. And he didn't even offer me nothing to drink. What's that doing? Trying to stir up. That's something. Trying to stir up. All right. Who's the author of confusion? 
Yeah. Satan is. And when we when we try to start something like that, that is the furthest thing from being a Christian. Christians ain't gonna try to start nothing. Christians are supposed to be showing love. Now every time I've been in the fields, he's offered me something to drink. Every time. Now I'm not, I wasn't saying that, trying to accuse nobody of nothing. Me and Daniel, I can go up there and maybe we get to talking and him needing to go out somewhere and deliver wood or maybe cut something. And I'm hindering him, but we're having a good time. And I go over to Ray and Ola, they treat me like I'm one of their sons. I mean, it's it's amazing the love that's shown in this church. I, I know I talk about that all the time. But I've never, ever belonged to a church that shows this much love. Everybody treats me like I'm they don't put me up on no pedestal, don't get me wrong, but they treat me like I'm somebody. They they treat me like they enjoy being around me, and I hope they do. I mean, that's that's uh, that's part of being a Christian. You want people to like you. You know, you want to have a, a well brained environment with you when you come, you know, to where people like you. I'm just I'm just an ordinary human being. I make mistakes just like everybody else does. But when I go out and visit with my members, they treat me like I'm somebody. I've never walked up to anybody's porch and felt like they're saying, Oh Lord, get that old preacher. <laughs> I feel good when I visit people and they Make you feel like somebody. They invite you in. And they sit and talk with you. And they offer you something to drink or maybe something to eat. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not saying do that when I come. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it is nice when you go and visit and people accept you for who you are and they show love toward me. I love to go up and talk to Daniel because we just sit out there on the wood pile have a good conversation about the Lord about life in general. Just have, we just have a good time. <laughs> and it what seems like 15 minutes when you look down to you, oh, Lord, I've been here two hours. <laughs> I know he probably says, oh, Lord, it's dirty. I'll never get my work done today. <laughs> but I appreciate our church. I appreciate our members. And uh, I really appreciate the church wanting to help other, other members. That, that made me feel good when Bill asked if any of the church members needed anything. That shows love. And like I said, this church is full of love. And I'm blessed. I am so blessed to be <coughs> your pastor, your leader, whatever you want to call me. I feel I feel blessed to be here. I thank God that he sent me here. <laughs> and I thank God that y'all accepted me. I mean, I've never pastored a church before. I still don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm still learning. But just pray that I'd always do what's right always listen to God and do what he wants me to do. Okay. Unless I'll make this Christmas 
a very special, memorable holiday. You know, they ain't, two, they ain't a whole lot in 2020 you can say we did it. I mean, it's been a terrible year with this virus and everything that's been going on, and politicians at each other's throat, trying to impeach each other, everything. I mean, it, it's, it's been a terrible year. But we can honestly say for us as a church, it's been a great year. Amen. Let's keep it that way. Amen. Amen.